Hi everyone, Tiffany here with The Crafty Home, and it is time for another Book Tuning from Bed episode. And today we are going to go through all of the books, sorry my arm's already getting tired, um, all of the books that I read uh, from January to March, since I have not done a wrap up in a very, very long time. Um, actually, it's not as many books as I would hope for, um, although I'm only four books behind um, my Goodreads goal, but a lot of that is because I read um, some middle grade um, graphic novels, so, <laughs> and they were rereads. Oh, that didn't take very long, so yeah. Um, some of, a lot of these actually are ones that I checked out from the library, so I don't have the physical copies, and since I'm trying to, um, well, I'm mainly, I'm stuck to my bed, so I don't have my fancy computer to go sit at and do editing. I won't have the pictures, so I'm sorry. I can't do the pretty picture covers, but you can always go to look them up on Goodreads. I don't know why I did this, but I did. I feel somewhat silly at the moment, so I will try to tone myself down. Okay, if I don't look at myself, it's a lot easier to not be silly, but I don't know. The minute like I see myself on the camera, I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. do this. Anyway, okay. Um, isn't it Marine Kiwi that ends her videos like that? I love it because I love Little Rascals, so that's from Little Rascals. Alright, so I have to look at my Chromebook, which is my new best friend. My husband gave it to me as an early uh, birthday present, and it like, has a touch screen and everything, and it's perfect for when you have to lay in bed, and I can watch booktube videos on it, and do a little bit of computing, and it's lightweight, easy to upload my videos, but you know it doesn't have it doesn't do much other than internet stuff but it's perfect for in bed. Anyway, all right, so the first book, and then I have to try to dig through my pile of books. Pile of books. Um, the first book that I finished in the new year, and I started it at the end of December, is uh, The Rosie Project by Grainy Simsion. I have no idea how to say the dude's name, and I believe it's a dude. A dude. Did I just call an old man a dude? I did. Anyway, uh, The Rosie Project. I uh, loved this book. I rated it a four star book, and I can't wait to read the next one. I would I probably borrow it from the library. I, I want to get it, though. I really enjoyed this book. I think I got it off of, good, off of Goodreads. I bought this from Goodreads. No, I bought, I bought it from Book Outlet. Um, but I, I know it was a bestseller, and a lot of people have read it. It's about a um, young man, a college student. Is he still in college in this? Or is he a professor? He's a professor of genetics who's socially um, awkward and his whole quest to find a wife. Anyway, that's about all I'm going to say because you just have to read it. It's hilarious and it's moving and it's really, really good. And I I just, I can't wait to read the next book. Although you don't really have to read the next book. Let me, um, it's not like a series where you have to read them all, if that makes sense. Like this is a complete story in and of itself. So don't feel like you're getting into another series by reading this. It's just like, like you can, if you want, if you want to know where the characters go, but you don't have to. Like this completes a good story, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that was the first book I read. The second book I read, and I think, I want to say this was for a readathon, but I don't remember, hmm. uh, was A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. Um, that was the first book in the Firebird, Firebird, man, I'm having a hard time with words. <laughs> the Firebird trilogy? Is that going to be a trilogy series? It's not just a duology, I don't think, because I don't think we have all the answers yet. Um... My memory is so poor. Anyway, I gave that four stars, and that's a book about, like, uh, there's this thing called a firebird, and they've created it, and the daughter ends up, like, jumping through time to try to save, or, no, at first she's, like, going to try to kill somebody, right? Yeah, I think that's on the front flap, so I'm not giving anything away, and um, she jumps to all these parallel dimensions kind of thing. It's really, really good. I gave it four stars, and um, there was some insta lovey stuff that was kind of meh sorry I gotta kind of move my hand down um so yeah that's kind of why I didn't get five stars but it was really good it was well written 
it had uh, one of the parallel dimensions was uh, Russia, like a Russia type world. And I love books set in Russia. So for me, that made it like really, really good. So I loved that part. Um, next, uh, this is a book that I started reading on our trip to, um, where did we go? Legoland in December. And it just took me a month or longer to finally finish it. I was reading it on my Kindle, but I have a physical copy too, and that is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Gabaldon. I gave this uh, five stars. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. My husband got me the rest of the series that is out, except for the last one. Um, for Christmas, well, I went and bought it for myself, but he wrapped it up and gave it to me for Christmas. Um, except that I ended up getting the trade paperback version, mass market, I mean, mass market paperback versions, and I, we'll see how that goes. I may end up buying the regular paperback versions, because I'm not sure, they're hired, hard to open, I'm not sure how easy they're going to be for me to read. Like I said, I read this on my Kindle, because I got it originally for 99 cents um, on my Kindle, so I couldn't pass that up. Um, so we'll see how easy it is to read. So, yeah, I may end up having to repurchase them as paperbacks, trade paperbacks. But anyway, I gave this five stars. I need to hurry it up or this video is going to be forever long. Okay, I only have so much time before my phone runs out of room. Um, next up was An Ember in the Ashes. This is a book that uh, my library chose for me as a book of the month pick, um, which my library does. And I already owned it and had wanted to read it obviously, because I bought it, um, and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir, which um, is a young adult fantasy novel uh, with a little dystopian mixed in there. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's been so long since I've read it, but you've seen it around booktube, so I'm sure you know a lot about it. I gave this five out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, next, I picked up Miss Marvel Volume 3, uh, Crushed, and that's by Willow Wilson, I believe. I don't, I think that's who wrote it, not who draws it, I believe, who illustrates it. Um, and I gave that three out of five, st three out of five stars. I really am liking the Miss Marvel comics. Um, most graphic novels I only give three out of five stars because graphic novels are just, yeah, for me. I mean, I really... I like them, but they aren't, like, yeah, they mostly get three out of five stars. So three out of five stars is, like, good for me, for a graphic novel. Um, and let's see, that is all that I finished in January. So moving on to February, um, although I started this book in January, it just took me forever to finish it because I just couldn't get it into it as much as the first one. And that is 10,000 Skies Above You by Claudia Gray. Um, I did give this four out of five stars, though. It just took me a bit longer to get through it. And I think it was because I kind of missed the Russia universe from the first book. Um, but once I got past, I, th I would say it took about halfway through before I really got more invested in the story. So I don't know why it took me so long. It just did. And, and then I really liked it. So that's that one. Now I'm going back to the page. Here we go. Uh, next book I finished is a book that I buddy read with my good buddy, uh, Amy from Amy C Books. I'll try to remember to link her channel down before. I think I've said I'm going to link a whole bunch of things down below. We'll see if I do. Um, and that is The Alloy, Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is actually a fairly short Brandon Sanderson book. Um, the only other short Brandon Sanderson books I've read is... Um, Steelheart and that whole series. Is it Steelheart the first one? I think so. Um, anyway, this is the fourth fish Mistborn novel. So really there's like the Mistborn trilogy and then this is set in the Mistborn universe. So it's considered a Mistborn novel. It happens many, many years later though. So it's completely different. Um, this is almost, well, it, not just almost, it is very steampunkish. It almost reads like a steampunk western. It's amazing. I gave it five out of five stars. I was laughing hysterically in this book. I, I loved it so, so much. I can't wait to read the next one. I have 
uh, there's two more in this series, and I'm not sure if that's all that's going to be in this one. I need to double check that. But anyway, I have them, and I can't wait to read them because this is so great. Uh, Wax is the main character in this, and um, yeah, it's just really, 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 really good. <sighs> I love Brandon Sanderson. He's amazing. Okay. Uh, next, I read Mermaid Moon, which was one I got for review by Colleen um, Coble, and this it's a Sunset Cove novel, so it was set um, in um, Sunset Cove, but like it doesn't. It's one of those series where they're all set in the same place, but and and they have some characters the same, but you don't have to have read them in order. Although I have read the first one I believe in this one anyway it's kind of like it's one of those cozy mystery type books I gave it three out of five stars it was good um it was what you would expect from a book like this it wasn't like blow your socks off or anything but it was good um next I read The Royal We by Heather Cox I believe I picked this one up because it was uh the read with friends goodreads group pick um and that's a that's um What's her name's group? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Names right now. They're not coming. I picture her face, but it's not going to come. Anyway, look up Read with, Reads with Friends and you'll know whose channel it is. And maybe I'll remember. I'll try to remember to link her channel down below and you'll know who I'm talking about. Okay? Okay. Uh, next up after that, I finish or I read uh, Calamity, which is book number three, the final book in the Reckoner series um, by Brandon Sanderson. And I read this like the day it came out, and it, I started it the day it came out, I believe. So good. This, but it took me a little bit because I was reading other things. That's not when I finished. Oh, I put the wrong date. Anyway, that was weird. Sorry, Goodreads made a mess up. Anyway, very, 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 very good. Lots of twists and turns, as you would expect from Brandon Sanderson. Amazing. I totally did not see the ending coming, and this, like, cover is really, really cool. Um, after that, I read Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I gave that four out of five stars. It probably would have got five out of five stars, except um, there were many points that I just didn't agree with. Um leave it at that. I, I, I didn't agree with the way she dealt with some social issues, although I did think it was thought-provoking. So there you have it. Um, I believe I picked that one up because it was a read with friends uh, group pick as well. It, Leaning Lights is her channel name. I can't remember her first name yet though. Um, it may come to me. It's gonna drive me nuts. And so the next I started rereading the Amulet series because book number seven came and it had been a long time since I'd read them and I have a horrid memory so I thought well I'll reread them and my son was like read them read them and he owns them my uh, mom had pre-ordered number seven so it came in the mail here so anyway um I so I read book one the Stonekeeper if you've not read these they're middle grade they're really really good graphic novels the artwork let's see if I can find a cool a, one of my favorite pages there's a lot of the, the two page spreads where it's just pictures are really cool. Come on, why can't I find one? Anyway, I've rated all of his, all of the Amulet series four out of five stars. So I just can like hold them up briefly to show you the covers of them. But I read all six of them in the month of February. Did I? Yeah, I read them all at the end of February. Why can't I find where it's not in this first one? The Stormkeeper. I thought it was. Come on now, don't call me a liar. Oh, what was that? Okay. okay, it might be in the second one, so maybe I'll show you in the second one. So here's the Stonekeeper. Here is what's the second one? The Stonekeeper's Curse. Which, let's see if I can find, it might be in this one that has the picture I like. Or is that one? That one does not know. I think it's this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the pictures I really like. Let's see. Let's see. His art style is really, really pretty. This is the guy who is doing, 
or did or is doing graphic novels, I believe, for Harry Potter. I'm not a Harry Potter person, so I don't know. But anyway, um, so this is the second book. The third book is The Cloud Searchers. And then the fourth book is The Last Council. And the fifth book is Prince of the Elks. The oh, fourth book, fifth book was Prince of the Elves. Fourth book was Elves. Well, anyway, sixth book was Escape from Lucian. Oops, something like that. And the seventh book is Firelight. So anyway, my son loves those. He read them like all in one day when the seventh book came. He just sat and read all day long, which I love. Um, and then the other book I read was another one he wanted me to read. I was kind of rereading them with him uh, to get him motivated to read them. And then he kind of took off and left me behind. Although he's like, Mom, you have to read them all now because I've only read the first couple. And that's Percy Jackson series. So um, I read The Lightning Thief, or reread The Lightning Thief in um, at the end of February. And so now I need to get busy and finish reading uh, Sea of Monsters, I believe is the second one, and then finish the series out. I have told my son that when he finishes reading them all, we're going to go up to a place um, a couple hours away where you get air, where it's like one of those trampoline places, and you can take a friend. So he's almost done with the fifth book, <laughs> so he's going to hold me to it. He's very excited. Anyway, so I finished that. Um, I love when there's authors like that that can get boys especially to want to read that much. Um, so then, ooh, I can't record much more. Um, then, um, yeah, then I read in March, I finished After You by Jojo Moyes, uh, which was good. I actually liked that a little bit more in some ways than After or before Me Before You. And I rated that four out of five, so that's just uh, the continuing story from the other book. And then, in anticipation of reading Queen of Shadows, I reread uh, Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. So that was a reread for me. Um, I did, like, kind of pick up some stuff I hadn't read the first time. I think I almost enjoyed it more the second time than I did the first time. Um, I don't own that, though. I, I want to. I need to buy those. They're on my wish list. Um, I have a birthday coming up, so I'm going to buy some books, hopefully. Um, Wonderstruck. Then I read Wonderstruck. Sorry, I'm like almost in wonder at the books I read. And this wasn't that long ago because now this is March. Um, <laughs> I read Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. I rated that 4 out of 5. I love his books because I love the pencil drawings in them. And his books, um, while they can be slow in some parts, my son seems to have a hard, even though they're written for his age range, he kind of has a hard time getting into them. Um, but I love them and I love... Oh, at the end, there seems to always be these twists and turns, and they, they're very thought-provoking novels, and um, I really enjoy them, but the pencil work alone makes them worth reading. If you haven't read a Brian Selznick novel, you really, really should, because they're, they're amazing. They look huge, they're very thick, and it's because most of it's drawing, really. Most of it is drawings, um, but they're pencil art, and he does them all himself, and they're, they're amazing. They're so amazing. Um, the next book I read was one that was a read with friends pick. Whew, I read a lot of those. Um, I've been starting to, I haven't this month, even though they read station 11 and I really wanted to, but then I got distracted with rereading all of the Throne of Glass series and then readathons and yeah, it's busy, busy, busy. Uh, so the last book that I'm going to talk about though, is the one I finished right at the end of March, and that's Snow Like Ashes by Sarah. I can't pronounce her last name. Um, I really, really liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, I love the, like, seasons, the whole idea of the season kingdoms, and how, like, each season, like, even the way you looked was different based on what season you came from. It was really interesting. Um, I really did find the book fascinating, so much so that I had to um, beg my library to buy the next one, and it's waiting for me at the library, which I'm really excited for. Um, so yeah, those are the books I read from January to March, and now hopefully I will be much better at uh, giving you wrap-ups so that 
I will remember more of the books so that I can give you better reviews on them uh, each month. So yeah, let me know what you have read for the first part of the year and um, what your favorite book was or if you've read any of these. Uh, let me know what you thought of them so we can talk about them in the comments. And until next time, I'll chat with you all later. Bye.